think prenatal yoga is a great avenue in to empowering women. It just like, I love being in a circle of women. I love men, I do. But men connect differently. They need different things. When women come together in a circle, we raise our serotonin levels up. We get all kind of happy and it actually heals our heart, our body. It, it alleviates the stress in our minds. And now everything is functioning at a higher state. Our immune system, our circulatory system. There's so much that comes when women gather. And if you bring women together that are all going through something similar, they can commune together. They can, they can address each other's, you know, oh, like if you're pregnant and you had that, oh, I did too. You know, they have a community of resources. Do you have a good doctor? Oh, I have a great midwife. Or, you know, oh, you're going to, you're going to have the same due date as me. Wow. Next thing you know, you have a park partner and you go to the park together. There's so many great reasons to come together when you're pregnant. And I love that yoga brings women together. And I hope that yoga can teach women about their bodies. I hope it can teach women about their power. And I hope that you don't have to have a baby to understand that this power of Shakti lives inside of you. It's not just being pregnant that, yeah, you get to witness more of that Shakti. It's like, oh my God, it's moving. Like it really is happening. Something knows how to make a baby and I didn't have to do anything. It's mind boggling. And then to really trust that Shakti is like, it's excited when you're aware of it and she dances inside of you and you're, this baby gets formed and the baby is also another energy. So you have this Shakti, you have this baby and you have yourself and this community happens inside of you. It's outrageous. And when you trust that you're okay and you're safe and you're well and this body knows what to do, when you give birth in that natural way, mm, Nothing can stop you after. You're in, there's, a, there's a force that you've witnessed that's, that's better than anything I can explain. The ecstasy that you get, you can hear it. I get like all crazy. <laughs> the Kali comes out again a little bit. But I want women to know that. I want, to know, I want everyone to know. You know, just the way in which that we feed our bodies with our minds, our thoughts, is going to affect us. It's going to affect, it's going to have some imprint on us. What do you want to imprint? What do you want your body to read and feel and taste and be nourished by? Or what do you want to give? Who is it that you want to be in everything that you do? Like, you know, you can extend that feeling and you can, ex like your heart can literally change the, sh the, the room with your vibration. It's not just in pregnancy, but of course we get a little more spotlight in pregnancy. We get a little more, you know, height, heightened uh, sensitivity and of course we get like, you know, a little more like awareness because we're feeling life being formed. We're witnessing creation, but we're all, we've all been through it. We all have a dance that we've experienced through witnessing our own, you know, birth. So that's another whole story, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll have to talk about that later. You know, for me, one of the things that's really also very big is to, to learn how to have more compassion in the world, to look at people and recognize people have a birth story that has been imprinted in them from their mother's experience, the environment that the mother experienced while she was pregnant. So here you are being formed and you're marinating in your mother's experience. And what if your mother's experience wasn't so great? What if she wasn't feeling supported? What if she was just, you know, not, not connected? It, whatever it is, you are learning and you're, you're, you're literally feeding off your environment to help. Your, your heart measures the environment. It tells the brain how to develop all the functions of the body. It tells the cells how to, what pro proteins to create. So depending on how the environment is, it's going to shape you. And okay, so now you're, you're marinating in this environment and then comes the birth. What if a mother had an amazing pregnancy and then all of a sudden the birth, is, the birth experience is robbed from her? And what if she gets to the hospital and the doctor is just like, I want to I wanna go home soon and this is taking too long. And now a woman is self-conscious like, oh, you mean I'm doing this wrong? Now you've just told a woman, you've, you've taken away her power. 
her uterus doesn't know anything because it's not, it's not contracting properly because she's not feeling so good. So the oxytocin isn't kicking in. The muscles aren't doing their thing. And, and all of a sudden, you know, oh, I think we gotta, we gotta, you know, we gotta move this for, further. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot you with a little drugs and try to get the contractions going. Oh, boom, the tocin sets in and now drugs are in her body that are foreign and she's freaking out because she doesn't have the natural opiates anymore. The painkiller that naturally comes through the endorphins go away. And all of a sudden, Pitocin is too strong and she needs an epidural. Now you've taken away all feeling. She has no feeling. She disconnects anymore. with her own uh, nature. Yeah, actually. gone. Mm. No longer can she rely on her own nature and now she's giving over her birth to be delivered by a doctor. And this is what happens all the time. So. She might be okay with all this because it's the process, but what happens to the baby's experience? What, what about you? <laughs> How would you feel, right? So here you are, you're ready to go. You're getting ready to get down that birth canal. You're swimming, you're, you're like ready to spiral out into life. And now you've been like, oh, what happened? Okay, wait, something's wrong. Okay, oh God, so what's going on with mom? Okay, I'm not, my oxygen levels have changed. I'm not even able to breathe as much. It's getting tight in here. It's getting uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You, get you might be claustrophobic you because your birth, birth process was just stopped. If you've had a cesarean and the baby like gets taken out, that baby didn't experience, first of all, it, it didn't experience the directionality of how to get out. It's been, it was lifted out. So like, I'm a cesarean by the way. Okay. So, and that's just, I, I had to learn, understand myself. I had the worst sense of direction for most of my life. Like, I'm like, can I hold on to your arm as we walk? Cause I'll just get lost. I will walk into the, I, if there's a choice of right or left, I'll go left if it's supposed to be right. And it's like, if I'm driving, you better, like, we gotta focus, I need a co-pilot, you know? And I realized, oh my God, I have no sense of direction. I'm a total cesarean baby, you know? Um, I'm all, not only do I have my compass spinning, because I had no direction to get out, but there's other things that happen. And I'm not going to get into all the stories of a birth, but what I will say is every single person on this planet has been limbically imprinted. The limbic system is your emotional uh, endocrine system. It's the emotional body that's being registered on, and it's affecting your hormones. So we all have an imprint that have ha that's happened in utero. And we can look at somebody and say, wow, that's an angry person. Well, guess what? That was an angry baby. That baby got pulled out by forceps. It got like yanked. It didn't even have the dignity to have a moment to like let its own body produce and help support the oxytocin levels to get the uterus to come out, to come to help support it. Babies affect birth. They can affect the hormonal system, but if they're not given the opportunity or they're drugged, if a baby is drugged, do you know what happens? They seek drugs later in life. Mm. Yeah, they, they, want, they, they feel that desensitivity from a mother. Mm. They're like, oh, that's an experience I want to repeat. You repeat patterns that are imprinted inside of you. So I just hope that people can look outside and see a world that's really suffering. Because at the deepest level, if we don't start honoring the process of birth, if we don't teach women how to look at pregnancy in a sacred way and to teach themselves how to, or just to be in the right company to be supported and empowered, their birth is gonna, even if it doesn't go exactly, look, if a birth doesn't go exactly as a woman plans, it's okay. You know, you might not have natural childbirth and you might have been you know, rescued through cesarean, great, because you know what? You're still feeling good because your baby's in your arms and the, the, the oxytocin is coming back and the prolactin is kicking in and we have bonding and we're, we're not feeling bad about ourselves. You know what I mean? If the environment around is a celebration, even in the most emergency situations, we're celebrating the situation. It has the opportunity to alleviate and to nurture that imprint to come forth with more of an empowered, you know, you're conscious, you can, you can change it a little bit. You know, so we look out and we see the world and we go, you know, I, I, feel, I feel better about seeing people for who they are now and not being so mad at them for being so, you know, I don't know, like 
difficult. <laughs> like, you know, you, gotta, you might feel bad and not feel angry at somebody. You might give them a, a moment and, and reflect a little bit on maybe their journey has been tough. Maybe they're not even aware of their own journey coming into the world. It's something to think about. And that's another whole, like I said, it's, we don't have to, you know, obviously, it doesn't have to be something that we have to advertise right away, but it is something that I bring into my trainings. People don't expect to go through their own birth rebirth experience. And what I offer you is the opportunity to ask your family and members, your mother, anyone in your family that remembers your you know, your parents, what was your birth experience like? Find out and we'll talk about it and we'll connect in a community that's supporting you. And I'll give you my insight into, you know, my own children that are now almost one's a teenager and one's preteen and I've watched them. They're so different. They're completely different, but their births were so different. And I understand them better because of their births. And they, I, have, I have more willingness even to have patience in some ways. I'm like, oh, like I get who they are. And that's a cool thing because then we can really understand each other from a, a higher state of thinking and from a more compassionate place in our heart. And I think that's how we change the world. It's nothing short of that. That's what I think. I think it's really awesome that yoga teachers have an opportunity to really empower not only women, but a whole new generation of conscious beings that are birthed with respect and with, with consciousness. It's a pretty cool thing, you know, and it's, it's something that I, 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 I would just, I would talk about this all day long if I could. I would just do one person at a time because I know they're going to affect one person and they're going to affect one person and pretty soon it's going to stretch and it's going to spread. And thank goodness for things like this where we can communicate to others that are, you know, I can't be with in person. And, and there's so many more great beings that are speaking this language. And I, I just love that we have a tribe of, of, of heart connection. So thank you for even asking. Thank, thank you, you very much interested. about it. Uh, and I'm so, so happy because, that I get to come to Athens. Yeah. I've been coming to Athens for eight years. And, and it's been incredible to help even heal a city that, you know, sometimes feels like it's in crisis, but if we can look at each individual as, as with more compassion, you know, and the environment that has been here has been volatile, and that creates an environment that might need a little nurturing. And we can do that, and we can change it, and we can turn on new genes. We don't have to only live off of our old ways of being and habits and patterns that are bringing us down. They belong to the past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can, we can literally do yoga and yoga a new person that emerges inside from a, from a deeper awareness, from our breath, from the gift of the goddess herself, from, from that willingness to, to not only you know, tap in and go deep, but to, to reach out and hold, hold each other and to say, we're better, we're better together. You know, we, we can do more in community. And if we come together with this much force, if one heart can be this powerful, imagine two hearts and imagine a community. And imagine a vortex of energy that rocks this city and changes things. I really believe it can happen. I do. I know it is happening. I just have to keep putting it out there. Yeah. Just need to act. Yeah. All the time, every moment. Yeah. Become witness. Become witness to how you're feeling and go further than that. Ask yourself, is that feeling old? Is it true? Is it you? You gotta ask yourself those questions because not all of your feelings are really true. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. It's really a pattern of your thought. And your thought pattern is cellular. And your cells are, are almost like continuing to feed you with what it's been fed in the past. So the environment that you've been living in and marinating in maybe the first half of your life or even in utero, if it wasn't great, your cells remember that. And they're gonna try to keep expressing that. So you have to witness the feeling and you have to go, you know what? This is coming from this place and it's not really who I am. And when we go deep into meditation and we tap into that wellspring and we bring the power of the earth up into us and we bring the power of the energy of the cosmos and creation and Shakti into our heart, we go, yes, this is more, I'm more. 
And then you go, okay, I'm, I'm repatterning myself every time I say yes. Every time I uplift and breathe versus get down in despair. And I'm not telling you not to go to the dark place because you have to dig in and you got to go there and you got to look at it. You got to really look at it. You got to sometimes live in it to recognize the pattern. But you don't want to water that seed too long. You don't want that to be the seed of your future. You want to look at it, you want to bring it up to the surface and you want to transform it into something else. You want to become who it is that you know you can be. And hopefully, you know, when we see someone who's in, like inspired or, or a little bit more on that path of awakening, so to speak, if you want to even call it that, they just, they seem more in the flow. Hopefully we can celebrate that person and not get upset and close down and shut down, but we can, we can actually connect in a way that goes, I am that too. I'm nothing but consciousness. And so are you, right? I exactly. know you know that. <laughs> yes. And the more we pull together, the more we awaken the world to that concept. It's a good thing.